guys, you are not going to believe what just happened. Everything's okay. I'm just in absolute and utter shock. Welcome to my channel. Uh, welcome back if you've been here before and this is, if this is your first time here thank you for clicking and coming along. So for my regular subscribers you will already be aware that I'm, I've taken on the Wainwright challenge in the Lake District. 245. Uh, I've done up to date, up to now I've done six not a lot considering there's 214 to do but I've made a start and that's the main thing but this week I've mixed things up a little bit I've came to very very north Yorkshire just encroaching Yorkshire and behind me I'm not sure if you can see that I mean if you can't I'd be surprised is Ribblehead Viaduct. Now, I've only been here once before, and it must have been five years ago, perhaps. Yeah, four or five years ago. Um, I've came for sunrise. Now, sunrise is just behind me over there. It is around about five past eight sunrise, and right now it's about 20 past seven. So I've got a bit of time to to get to uh, where I want to pitch up and, and get set up. But if I'm honest, I don't hold out much hope. I mean, there is a break in the clouds. So with a bit of luck, if I can just uh, penetrate through and illuminate the viaduct, I would be very, very happy. Very happy. But... Right now, I'd say it was 70 30 against, but you never ever know. You've got to buy a raffle ticket to win a raffle, as they say. Um, I've got some exciting news actually. Um, I won't tell you right now, but I've invested in an extra bit of kit for my photography and for this channel for, for the vlogs. Um, it's gonna absolutely open up so many other opportunities. Um, but like I say, I won't, I won't mention anything just yet. But I am looking forward to sharing it with you guys. The thing with this location is it's very cliche. You know, there's to get different compositions it is quite hard um, the classic obviously is the the panoramic from from this side um, the eastern side but I may go to the western side as well and do a panoramic panoramic from there because I haven't personally seen many from that side so that's always an option I mean, we can always go up the very top there, um, shooting down, down the track. Maybe try and go both sides, shoot both sides of the track. So there's four different compositions. Um, I just really hope. I mean, there's this slight colour in the clouds behind me. So maybe them odds have risen slightly. I mean, like I say, back there, it's very, very low cloud. So that might buy me a little bit more time to get set up and find, find a decent composition. I don't want to go too far to the north because I want to be central to, to the viaduct. That means going off 
off track, off the beaten track. But I mean, it's I've got a head torch, as you can see. Um, it's it's kind of light, relatively light, light right now. So I can't see any dramas. But yeah, anyway, that's enough rambling on. Let's get up high through this bog and get set up. Right, so I think I've found a, a potential composition uh, just here in front of us. There's some, I'm not sure if it's limestone or not. I know there's a lot of limestone around here. Um, but we've got this rock formation quite prominent in the foreground. Um, just to break the foreground up really because beyond that, down here, in front of the viaduct, in between the viaduct and, the, and these rocks, it's just a grassy area. Uh, as nice as it is, it doesn't do a lot to the image, doesn't really add much. Whereas this foreground here really adds something, um, something extra to the image. But my only my only query with it is it's not central to the to the viaduct. I'd have to go a little bit to the left. Maybe what 30 foot? Maybe 20 foot maybe. And this is me dead centre now in the viaduct. But now the rocks. And the boulders are over there. So, I mean, there's some this side as well, not as many, but there's, I mean, there's little bits, little snippets here I could potentially use, and I think I will use. I'd have just preferred a lot more. I mean, there's two or three here that's quite, pr pr that's quite prominent in the foreground. My lips are really cold already. So, um, yeah, I'll get set up and I'll, I'll work this area. Like I said, I've got to my left in front of me and to the right. So I've got three different areas. I could potentially go a bit higher. Because um, looking through the viaduct now, you can see where Ingleborough comes down and Wainside comes down into like a little... Well, it's not a valley, but it, you can see through the viaduct, and I'm not sure if I like that. So I think by going higher, I'll raise. Oh, sorry, I'll lower the viaduct towards towards the ground. So getting up there is definitely a potential. Right, let's get set up and work this little composition here left central and right Right then, I don't need that no more. So that's the first composition in the bag. Uh, I've taken two, one where you can just get each side of the viaduct in and I've came back quite a bit, well a little bit more, to get a little bit more of the outside. So there's two different images here. Um, I'll just talk you through the settings. I am at 1.5 seconds ISO 100 and F10. I'm hoping by F10 that the foreground and the viaduct are in focus. I have focus stacked these. Um, well, I've taken two images to potentially photo stack them. 
being that it's F10, I might not need to, but I've always got that option just in case. Um, I'd rather have a choice as a backup, just in, just in case that the F10 doesn't quite bring it all in focus, because the foreground is quite close. But as far as the classic leading line, I think it's around about here. It starts on the bottom left of the image and it just works its way to the centre, up to the middle and then onto the viaduct. Well, that's what it looks like on the camera. So you tell me if you agree with that. Um, with regards to the sunrise, there is colour just behind me. Uh, there's a few wisps of cloud that's kind of pink or peach but where the sun rises there's that it must be the biggest cloud in the area and it's right where the sun rises but as I'm just looking around now Engelborough looks very very dramatic so I might, I'm in two minds now because I'd like the viaduct in it with the clouds but that means going right over, over there to potentially have to come back. No, I've got a few hours so I think I'll do it. When I work, work my way over to the, the left hand, or the right hand side as we look at it um, and shoot across as I said earlier shoot across the viaduct with Engelborough in the background because the drama in them in them clouds them low clouds are pretty nice I just hope they're still going to be there when I get over there because it's a good five minute walk so I'll quit this chit chat <laughs> and get over there and hopefully get a pretty decent image let's have a look funny story actually that's just reminded me when I'm back in this this precise part of Ribblehead. The last time I was here, um, it was my very first time. I hadn't been doing photography that long actually, maybe a year or two. Um, so this was one of my one of my first locations when I started to like, take it serious. Not not serious where you know. It was the be all and end all. It was it was it become more more of a hobby. I you know I really started to research everything a lot, and I'd like to think I've I've came on. I've moved on since then as a photographer. But anyway, as I was saying, this exact location, I actually lost the lens. Believe it or not, it was with this jacket as well. It's kind of scary. This I was wearing this jacket on this location. And it was the, I mean, it was the 18 to 55 kit lens. Now, I know a kit lens holds a lot of stigma for not being the best lens ever. Um, but that was, I, I'll tell you, I ended up buying a new one. Um, because it wasn't a bad little lens, actually. It was light, it was compact. The range was brilliant, you know, 18 mil to 55 mil. So it was, it was a good little lens. I mean, could you imagine if I found it? How scary would that be? Five, maybe five years later? Could you imagine if I came across it? Because it was literally in this area. It fell out of this pocket, which ironically is, is open. I never learn, but there's no lenses in there this time. I'm happy to say. But anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. Oh, good times emotional times at the time but looking back it was quite funny yeah anyway I'm nearly there now um, I think the clouds are actually moving that way so looking in the distance I haven't got long to get some atmospheric clouds over the top of Ingleborough with the viaduct Right, anyway, I'll bring you back when I get to this point and get set up. I've, 
came across a dilemma. Nothing is ever straightforward with, with me. Just behind me is Burnside. Now I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but there's some very, very low cloud up there. Now I've never ever had a cloud inversion. And looking at that over there to, to the right, how much of that cloud continues, I don't know. Is it gonna be worth trying to get up there? Even, even just higher than the cloud, ever so slightly. Come on, come on, let's do it. Come on. Now, the intention today was never to climb anything higher than ground level you know that's what the waiting rights are for but I can't pass up this chance no chance uh -uh. nope so that might not work now when I come back but this right come on because that is getting me all excited oh yes Right, as you can see, we've stopped. The reason being, getting above them clouds is a lot further than I thought. Like I say, it's only my second time here. It's actually my first time up at this point. Um, sorry, I'm just scanning, completely scanning the area. I need to concentrate. My mind's changed three times already. I've gone from the sunrise didn't work. I've gone from Ingleborough, shrouded in cloud, changed my mind again to this. Um, I just haven't got time to go down the bottom of there and back up the ridge to get above that cloud. And if I did get there, if there's a potential chance, it could burn away. So I just wish and wish there was another way I could get above them clouds. I've got an idea. Watch this. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, I have invested in a drone. The DJI Spark bundle kit got the remote, got the little guy, got some clouds over there, that's just lighting up with the sun, so let's, let's get it up there.
Right, I'm not sure if those drone images even worked. Um, like I say, I've just got it. I've only had it less than a week, maybe three or four days. Um, I couldn't get as high as I wanted um, to look down on the clouds. <clears throat> so, that cloud inversion still eludes me. But, I'll get one. I'll, I will get one one day. But, as you can see, I'm just standing here now, idle. Nothing in my hands. Just taking in the scenery. But whilst I've got the drone, I'm going to try something. Now, it's not spectacular. Um, I know there's a train coming from from Leeds going west towards Carlisle. Now, it's supposed to leave Rubblehead about five past nine. It's just gone nine o'clock now. Um, my only concern is, as you can see on my face, the sun is shooting right in my face now. It's completely up. Um, it's casting a nice light on the, on the dew, really nice. And I'm studying with, with my hands in my pockets. <laughs> and I call myself a photographer. But it's not, it's, it's just a, a bog standard people carrying train. There's, there's nothing spectacular about it. But I want to try um, whilst I've got the drone here. I'm going to give it a go uh, because I know in July, August, September and October there's, I think it's the Flying Scotsman, I'm not 100% sure, uh, comes over here. So this will be a good, a good recce. Angle wise, where I'm positioned, maybe isn't the best because you don't see much of the viaduct. Um, ideally you want to be facing it side on. From, from either side, preferably where I was earlier. So where I'm positioned now isn't ideal, but I haven't got time to move. So, like I say, I'm standing here, hands in my pockets, just waiting, really. <laughs> it's all about a waiting game. In fact, I better check the time. No, it's just gone nine o'clock now. So I've got six minutes before this train comes um, I will I will film it I will vlog it so you'll get as it happens if you like don't expect too much because like I say I've only had the drone a couple of days so it's taken some getting used to um, but this shouldn't be hard really get it in position and just wait now I've got 46% left on the battery I've got two other ones, so it's not a problem, but I want to save those for the viaduct itself a bit later on. But it's got the return to home on 30%, I think, or 25%. So that gives me round about 20% to play with. So I might send it up around about five past. Get it in, so I have a minute, one minute, to get it in, into position. And... I don't know whether to do video or stills. We'll see. You'll, you'll see in a second. If I put some stills up, I've done both. Um, if I don't, I didn't. But anyway, I've, I've rabbled on a, a bit long now. I'm ready. Little man's ready. I just hope the trains are on time. I've got four minutes, so... Uh, Let's get set up, get it up in the air, and face it that way. Because right now, <laughs> it's facing one side, and that's no good. <laughs> uh, cloud inversions. Beat me again. Oh yeah, of course the train's early. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, of course it's early. Trains are never early, man. Come on, come on. False alarm. That was a truck. How I've mistaken a truck for a train, I do not know. But it's just pulled up now. It's actually late. <laughs> so, let's get the little guy up in, into position. Well, I do believe I might have got it. 
maybe it's just gone out of shot now. Well, fingers crossed that worked. That was a bit of a panic. But hopefully, I've just captured my first train on a viaduct with a drone. Right, we're off that uh, that high vantage point now. Just walk through ankle deep grass. Well done, Dan. Thankfully, my trousers are waterproof, so that's not a problem. Well, as you can see, I didn't get that image from that side. I decided against it. So I've decided instead this would be a good time for a coffee break and a coffee refill. I've actually brought my stove and um, some coffee. So I think I'll I'll have one now, pre-made, and uh, just have half an hour, I think. I think I'll have this, and then uh, head back over there, I think, and get the uh, classic panoramic one, I think. I've hid behind this side of the wall, simply because I think there's a photographer just behind me on the bank and it's etiquette photographer etiquette do not get in the guy's in, in his way um, i've got a bright blue coat on so i'd stand out in his image so i hope by sitting behind this this plaque i'm uh, i'm out the way for him so yeah photography etiquette doesn't cost anything cappuccino so that I don't waste any water what I'm going to do or attempt to do on this uneven platform is pour my water that I'm going to use into my flask and that will gauge how much I need full of good ideas me you know if you want more good ideas don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> That was awful. That was so cheesy. No, but seriously, guys, if you're enjoying this as much as I am, please leave me a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new around here. And, yeah, comment. I um, I always reply to the comments every time. Um, I love the interaction. That is a lot more than I thought. Right, anyway... Right, let's try and not blow up the viaduct. Where we are. <laughs> coffee on location. A fresh coffee on location. You can't beat it. Right. It's not quite jet boil time. That's taken about four or five minutes. That's good enough for me. Now I've just got to pour that into there without burning my hand. I'll tell you what I'll do, just to play it safe. Guys, you are not going to believe what just happened. Everything's okay. I'm just in absolute and utter shock. So, where I started the morning, there's like a, a ridge 
that goes, it's not very high, but it's, you know, you can't see the far distance. So anyway, I had the drone up in the air. I've put some footage up already. And as I was facing the viaduct, just having a little play about, there was no trains, nothing like that. This aeroplane, it was, it was like a, a huge, what do they call them, like a huge bomber. It must have been, I mean, how about, it went over the, I'm absolutely speechless, it went over the viaduct and it banked to its left. Now it went over the viaduct and at one point I thought it's going to bloody hit the viaduct. That's how low it was and I'm sure, I'm almost certain I got it on footage. For the record, right, I didn't know it was coming because obviously it was on the ridge. I didn't hear it. I was facing the viaduct. And I just turned round and there's this huge, I mean, I didn't get a photo of it. I mean, I wish I had, because that, oh, how did I not get a photo of it? Oh. I'm genuinely, genuinely speechless. <laughs> I cannot believe my first time out with the drone. I've just captured an aeroplane, like a bomber size, flying over the Ribblehead viaduct. I cannot believe that's just happened. Oh man! Right then guys, as you can see, I've um, moved locations, I've came down from the, the very central spine of the viaduct and I've came up this, this rocky path. <clears throat> now I seen this image the last time I was here, um, I think, who got it? Stephen, Stephen Ballam. How you doing buddy? Hope, hope you're watching this by the way. If you're not, that was a bit awkward. But if you are, hope you're doing well, mate. We'll have to meet up sometime, 100%. But I think he was in this very, very similar um, location where I'm stood right now. You've got your, your concrete path leading from the bottom right-hand third um, right into the left-hand third. And then your top right-hand side, you've got the viaduct going in. Now, that's two leading lines you have. The bottom leading in from the right into the centre and then the viaduct into the centre. Unfortunately, the leading line doesn't lead to anything. And then I am eventually <laughs> going to make my way back to where I was earlier. In fact, I may even go further back because I've just, I've just noticed there's a lot more rocks a lot more rocks. I've just noticed there's, again, I'm not sure if it is limestone or not. I know there is limestone in the area, but there's like a, a platform. So I might head in that direction and shoot back for the, the classic panoramic and then make my way forward gradually and gradually and gradually. But what a day so far, what a day. I cannot believe I got footage of that plane. I wish to God I'd got the viaduct in the in the footage, um, but it, like I say, it came from behind us, well behind you guys, towards the viaduct, and it it banked over this side here. Um, so obviously I couldn't do stills and footage, video footage. But I've checked my footage and I did get it. So uh, fingers crossed that's that's come out okay. Right then, as you can see, we've we've moved locations again. I've actually gone in a full circle because this morning I went up this bank, this hill here, up towards Wernside, and then I spent about an hour over there. And then when I got the drone out. 
came under the viaduct, had my coffee, and then I came back to the previous location that I was earlier. So I've come in a full circle. The reason being is there's a little, a little hut. I'm guessing it was used for the um, for the construction workers when it was when the viaduct was getting built, um, like a like a, a bait room if you like. It's got a chimney stack and well, it did have a roof and it's got windows and somewhere to get out the elements because right round here, as you can see, it's pretty flat. So in the winter. And the wind and the rain and the hail and the snow, this will be awful to work in. But last time I was here, you could get over this, this wall. But if you notice now, they've put this monstrosity up. And absolutely, I mean, even if I couldn't get over the wall, I could incorporate the wall in the image. But I can't do I can't even do that now. And I need I really can't get over. I can't believe they've done that. I mean, I can try and take a handheld, but unless, oh, here we go, here we go. I can get up higher, yeah, or higher, and shoot over the fence, but the, the tree kind of blocks the chimney stack, which is a bit of a shame. Um, yeah, there's not a lot I can do really. I'll get it, I'll, I'll get the image, just so I can document it. You know, it won't be a, it won't be a wall hanger, but yeah, let's get set up and, and get this little hut. That, that is amazing. I've came away from the, um, the last location, that little hut. I've got my tripod set up, I plonked it down, turned the camera on, get everything set up, and I literally, I haven't moved the angle of the camera, I haven't changed the legs on the tripod, nothing. I plonked it down, switched it on, and <laughs> I kid you not, right? The composition is perfect absolutely perfect I've even got a leading line from the bottom left what a day honestly I'm getting planes nearly crashed into viaducts and I'm getting compositions without even working for it I mean I need to change the exposure of course I do but as far as the thirds and the composition is concerned, that's perfect. I'm not even going to touch it. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And I've even got, in the far distance, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, Ingleborough, the very top of it, there's like three ridges. And the third ridge on the right hand side, that's just still holding on to the last of the low, low lying cloud. Um, as you can see, I'm slightly squinting because the sun is trying to get through. It's a, it's a fantastic day, it's a lovely day. It's perfect for photography. If there was a bit of light, I mean, the composition itself, it looks a bit flat, but take nothing away from the area even in flat conditions unbelievable all right then as you can see we have uh, eventually it only took me two and a half hours no it hasn't that's a lie five hours I've been here five hours now and I've eventually came to the location the the composition that I had in mind. It's the classic, the panoramic. Um, I've already taken the image so I'll put it up at some point. Um, I took a seven, <clears throat> a seven image panoramic uh, from left to right. I think it's all right. Um, obviously right now you guys will have seen it because I'll, I'll have put it up on the screen by now. 
But as I stand here right now, I just do not know how that's came out. But anyway, I've, like I say, I've come away from the viaduct and I've made my way up. There's a little ledge over there. So I'm going to go up there for a, for a coffee. But on the way down there, I've came across this. Now, on the camera, it looks pretty small. But believe you me, this crevice, if you like, is huge. And just there, it looks like there's an entrance to a, well, not a cave as such, but it definitely leads underground. Ooh, you wouldn't get me going down there, I tell you. I can actually hear water. So there's definitely, definitely a cave under there. Brilliant. Just makes you think, doesn't it? It just makes you think, what is under my feet right now? It's a whole nother world. Right, let's get over there. Let's have a sit down because I want to do a little recce for a potential future wild camp. I think this location, it have to be on the right conditions because you're open to the elements. So I'd have to be a calm night, a dry night. But yeah, this location could be absolutely fantastic for a wild camp. So let's get up to the, up to the ridge, have a sit down and uh, have a look around. Right then, I think I have potentially found the perfect wild camp location. This looks perfect, honestly. Oh, I wish I'd done it tonight because these conditions could not be any better. Ah, oh, definitely. If you want to see a wild camp at Rubblehead Viaduct, leave me a like and leave a comment telling me why you want to see a, a wild camp here. Or just any comment. But mention hashtag wild camp Rubblehead. If you don't even know what to say in the comments, just put that. Hashtag wild camp Rubblehead and I will make it happen. Because this, this is perfect. Okay, it's not the flattest of areas, but I'm sure I can make it work. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, maybe springtime, perhaps before it gets stupid busy because I'll have to come last last thing late on and then go after sunrise there's a little dip just over here if there's a flat area in there that's gonna be the one oh no nope. <laughs> in fact that's another one of those caves Again, I can hear water. Yeah, we're not stopping down there. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, right guys. I'm gonna, gonna try and get back up here without ending up in hospital. Because I know my luck. And if I didn't have any bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Now then, which way? Gonna be the surfaced. Okay, good start. Okay. There we go. Right. So remember, remember even. Hashtag Wild Camp Ribblehead. And I will make that happen. But I've got an hour. Before I have to leave, because I'm going to a show tonight, like, like a meet and greet. Um, is it James, Jamie or Jim, 
Jamie Fox. Something uh, the guy who done um He Who Dares on Channel 4, the former SAS soldier, is coming to Carlisle tonight. So I mean a friend of mine, we're gonna go and watch him, go and see him. That guy will have some stories to tell. And maybe some tips for well camping. You never know. The guy was in the in the military for 20 years. So you'll know your stuff. Right. Back to the photography, being a photography channel. Mars looking rocks, one hell of a viaduct. Rocks in the foreground, viaduct in the background, bish bash bosh, wall hanger. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it, this image is gonna be a wall hanger. Probably my best today. There you go. I've put my cards on the table. Let me know what you think. Let me know if this is the best image. If not, which one and why? Tell me why you think the image you choose is the best one. So like I say, I've got an hour, so I'm gonna spend a good half hour here, 45 minutes, pack up and head to the train. But with that being said, I think I'll call it here because this is a bloody long one. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it, guys. I, I genuinely do. Um, I love making these for you, for, for you guys. I, I make them for myself, of course I do. But to bring you guys along on this journey is, yeah, it's a dream come true. You know, it gives me that motivation to get out, get out, get out, you know. I had that motivation prior to, to YouTube, of course I did. But now it's putting my work out there and you guys really, really drive me on. So I really want to thank you for um, for sticking around, really. And if you're new here and you're still watching this, oh, what's that word? K kudos? kudos? Thank you, <laughs> basically. Thank you ever, ever so much, honestly. I truly appreciate it. And for the guys that's already subscribed and you're still watching, again, high five to you guys as well. Brilliant. You're a fantastic audience. And uh, I hope you stick along. Stick along? I hope you stick around for the foreseeable future. Because this channel, hopefully, fingers crossed, with you guys on board, is going to go, go places. It's going to go higher and higher and higher. Um, we've got Scotland to go to, we've got Wales to go to, the Peak District, obviously the Lake District with the Wainwrights that I'm doing. The possibilities are endless. So uh, again, I've rambled on far too long. So thanks for watching guys. Until next time, I really appreciate it. Like I say, leave me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.